All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's Coach Mac, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about hot throws within the passing game. I had uh, one of our one of our viewers that, uh, that that comes to the blog regularly and takes a look at some of the videos sent sent me an email message and said, "Hey, you know, could you talk about hot throws and go through, you know, go through the progression on on hot throws within the passing game?" So the first thing I think we want to do is we want to talk about what hot throws are. All right, and hot throws are basically a way of accounting for or taking care of a blitzer all right that you would not have blocked in your protection scheme and usually that involves some type of big on big or half slide or a protection scheme where your five offensive linemen are responsible for four down linemen and a mic or or who you describe as a mic or identify as a mic linebacker or three down linemen and two all right stack backers or two three, four backers, all right? Basically, you have five offensive linemen, so you can account for five defensive players. And then the sixth or the seventh defensive player are players that you have to account for either with running backs or wide receiver routes with your quarterback throwing hot off of those blitzers, all right? So basically what it means is you have a linebacker that you cannot account for with any of your blockers in the pass protection scheme. And if that linebacker were to blitz the quarterback or rush the quarterback your quarterback must then deliver what's called a hot throw all right and you know the, the term hot throw means ball is hot blitzers hot get it out of your hand right now because we cannot account for that linebacker within our blocking scheme or within our protection scheme we cannot account for that linebacker so the quarterback has to be able to see that linebacker see the blitz coming and then get the ball out of his hand quickly so that he can all right put us not only in an advantageous situation with the football in space but also so that he can let the defense and the defensive coordinator understand that we are aware of where the blitzes are coming from and we have an answer with the football when those blitzes come all right we talked about this in, uh, in uh, one of my earlier blogs on pass protection if your quarterback sits in a pocket and he's getting hit underneath the chin all right or you know he's getting hit with the football in his hand by blitzers they are going to continue to blitz the quarterback all right in passing down situations if the quarterback can get the football out of his hand even if not even if every pass was not necessarily complete for a big game or every pass is not necessarily completed if he gets the ball out of his hand eventually they're going to stop blitzing because they're only going to blitz if they can affect and get to the quarterback if they're not really having an effect having an effect on the quarterback or getting to the quarterback eventually they may stop bringing their pressure if they don't feel like they can get to them so a quarterback that is cognizant of where the blitzes are coming from all right and that can get the football out of his hand when the blitzes all right show that are unaccounted for all right that quarterback can help slow down the pressure coming from the other team or the other defensive coordinator all right some other ways obviously to handle the blitz screen game okay all right, keep six or seven blockers in and fully gap out against pressure, all right, where your offensive line fully gaps one way and maybe your running backs fully gap out another way, or you keep both backs in and, and both your backs are accountable for, all right, linebacker blitzes. There are other ways to do it, but if you are going to try and get five out in the passing game or if you're definitely going to try and get three out to the front side of a passing concept, you are going to have to be able to teach your quarterback how to throw hot, all right, and what exactly is hot, which linebackers are hot, and what do I do with the football if it becomes a hot throw, okay? So what we're going to talk about is the way that, that we, all right, use our hot throws in our passing game. It doesn't mean that that's the way everybody does it. It doesn't mean that it's the right way to do it. It's just the way that we feel most comfortable, all right, teach, teaching high school quarterbacks how to respond and throw the ball in situations that we deem to be hot okay one of the first things that we do is we keep our quarterback front side on his reads all right in our drop back passing game we keep him front side on his reads for hot throws we try to protect his backside so that he doesn't have to side adjust or come off the front side to recognize a rotation or a backside blitz so that he has to throw all right a concept that maybe we have to site adjust which means on site change a route on the backside because of the backside pressure coming so I call a front side 
uh, pattern combination, five-step combination to the right. And now if the quarterback gets a certain secondary rotation or a certain look, all right, he's got to come off that concept and throw the ball backside. We don't teach that kind of side adjust in our offense. We teach front side progressions for the quarterback only. All right, so that means that we always have to constantly be aware of the possibility of eight man fronts and four coming from the back side of where the quarterback is not looking. All right, and anytime we feel like we have eight man fronts with four coming from the back side, we will always add a back into the backfield, all right, to protect that back side of the quarterback, and then we will allow the quarterback to progress off the front side of the concept that we're throwing. Okay. Another thing that we also do is we build our hot throws into the route progression that we throw. All right? In other words, we don't teach our receivers to recognize what linebackers are hot, and then if they get those blitzes, they have to sight adjust or adjust their route based on the blitz. So if I had a vertical route that I was running, all right, and certain backers blitzed, I now have to stem that to some type of quick slant or some type of shoot route to the outside. All right, that's just not something in high school I'm comfortable teaching. All right, so what I do is I try and build into each passing concept that I have, I try and build some type of hot throw for the quarterback that if he gets a blitzer that we deem to be hot, all right, he can throw that concept. All right, so I'm going to go through two or three, all right, or maybe four concepts that you can use in a passing game and how you can build hot throws into that and how we would determine, all right, who is hot and what the quarterback needs to do. All right. First one we're going to talk about is just simple curl slide. All right, we, we call it curl spot because we don't use the number two receiver on a slide, but it's an old-fashioned curl, flat, check down theory all right, that everybody in America probably runs. All right, so what we're going to do all right, is whatever side we're going to throw the football to, the offensive line, that's going to be the man big on big side. So if we were going to throw the football to the right, okay, our offensive tackle has the number two on the line of scrimmage, our guard has the number one on the line of scrimmage. Our center always turns away from the passing side concept. Okay, so our center, if we're throwing the ball to the right, is always responsible for turning the protection back to the left. He creates the zone side with the guard and the tackle, and now we have a three-man zone side. We determine who we want the mic to be in the defense. Okay, so even though I've got the mic drawn up as this inside stack here, when we throw the ball in our, in our half slide protection, we actually go one back or further back, and we declare that to be the Mike linebacker. Okay, that means that my deep, my offensive lineman now I have five to protect, and that means that we are going to block these one, two, three, four, and that fifth line. That linebacker is the fifth guy that we're going to count for. Okay, that now means that my quarterback is responsible for the play side inside, play side outside linebackers. Okay. So if he were to get a blitz from either of those linebackers, play side inside, play side outside, the ball's got to come out of his hand. It's not accounted for in the blocking scheme. Okay. So on the outside, we're going to run curl. We're going to take our number two and we're going to run a spot or a check down about six yards deep over the offensive guard. We're going to take our back and we're going to motion him out early. All right, on down set, motion him out early, release him to the flat right now. All right, quarterback is going to be, for us in the shotgun, it's a three-step drop, but it's normally a five-step drop progression that we're talking about. Okay, so now the quarterback is responsible for the front side, inside to outside linebackers. Within the curl spot flat concept, all right, what I've now done is I have given him two throws that he can make with two receivers that are ready to expect the football as soon as they enter their route. He's got two throws that he can make if he were to get a blitzer, all right, coming that would make it hot. In other words, a blitzer linebacker coming that we did not account for in the blocking scheme. Okay, so now if the Mike or the Sam were to pressure or blitz, that means the quarterback can now throw either the inside check down or the outside route to the tailback. And the easiest way to discuss that and teach it to your quarterback is replace inside blitzes with inside routes and replace edge blitzes with outside routes. Okay? Replace edge blitzes with outside routes. All right? So what you're trying to do is make sure the quarterback understands, number one, who his hot reads are, and then number two, within the route concepts that we're throwing, where the football can go if he were to get a blitz from a player that we don't have accounted for. Okay? 
and then within your teaching progression, have routes built in that you can throw hot. So right now we would say that this check down, all right, what we would call a spot, all right, and this swing, all right, this hot swing right now with motion from the back, we can go, all right, spot to hot swing if we get hot pressure right now or a pressure that or a blitz that we cannot account. Quarterback knows that he can go spot to hot swing right now. He can't throw the curl if it's hot because that's a 10-yard route with the quarter with the all right, X or Z receiver not expecting the football. So he can't deliver the curl route. Okay? So what he has to do is he has to know that if it's hot from one of these two, all right, he's got to deliver to the spot or the hot swing. Okay? Now, if you were to look at that against an odd front, all right, if you were to look at that against an odd front, all right, if we saw an odd front team, okay, and let's say we had, all right, we had end, all right, nose, end, all right, you go rush, Will, Mike, Sam, all right, obviously some people call him Jack and everything else. I've had that argument with several people in the past. Bottom line is you got four linebackers, you got a linebacker, two to the weak side, two to the strong side, and a three-four concept. All right, so what we would do now is we would teach our front side guard on the man side, if he's uncovered, he's going to turn a protection back. Okay? So now that he turns a protection back, all right, we are now going to block these one, two, three, four, five players, and the quarterback is going to be responsible for the play side, inside, outside linebacker to that side. So now those are the two guys that he's looking at, all right, within is is hot reads those are the guys that we can't account for in our blocking scheme in that protection all right and we choose to use that protection because it's the simplest to teach the kids all right we could get into a week where if we saw a three four we could change and maybe we could double read a guard or free man out a guy you could do all that if you wanted to but this is the same protection we always use so it's simple to teach to the kids versus even fronts odd fronts and stack fronts all right. So if we got a three-four, the hots would be Mike to Sam. All right. If we got the three-three stack. All right. If we got the three-three stack look, and they wanted to give us all right stack backers there. All right. With a dog walked out, and the dog walked out. Okay. Our lineman again, the front side guard and the protection is uncovered, so he's going to turn. My tackle stays big on big. My front side guard turns, so we're going to block the down three. Okay. And then. We're going to block the down three, and then we're going to block four and five right now. Okay? But what the 3-3 three, three stack creates is the 3-3 three, three stack creates an eight-man front with the possibility of four coming from the weak side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a backside slot, and I'm going to put him in the backfield, and I'm going to add him into the protection, and we're going to block that sixth guy now. So now I have six helmets to block six defenders, the quarterback now has to understand that seven and eight are on me. Okay? And now if we had that same, all right, if we had that same spot hot swing concept and our curl spot flat, now he has to understand who seven and eight are. I've left six in the protection. I've secured his backside, all right, by putting an extra player in on the backside. I still get three out on the front side now, all right? So I still have three out to the front side, and now my quarterback has to know who's hot. Okay, so when I do that, now my quarterback has to understand that he's hot off of either of the Sam or the dog coming right now, and he's hot to spot, hot swing. Okay, if you wanted to go, all right, like for us, if you wanted to go with some type of, all right, seam read progression, all right, we could run seam read, all right, right here, and if it was eight man front, it would be one high. We could go seam read, dig to our number two receiver with a snag by our number one and hot flare, hot swing by our back, okay? If we were to do that, it's still the same theory, okay? Now you've got quarterback understands who seven and eight are. Now he's got the snag route as an inside breaking route, and he's got the hot flare, hot swing as his outside breaking route, okay? So in, against this structure, if it was one of these inside stack guys coming, I would tell him probably to check and look at the snag first, if it was the dog coming, I would look to replace the dog with the outside hot swinger, hot flip. Okay? All right, so if you had some type of seam read, all right, we've got one in where we go seam read, snag flat, and we try and put all the pressure. If we get one high, we got a seam read. If we get a, a, a closed 
seam, okay, if I went back to original even 4-3 stuff, if we got a closed seam now, we give ourselves a chance if we went, all right, just base, and now we actually had safety closing the seam up, now that becomes seam read dig, okay, seam read dig with the back out, and now we're putting all the pressure, this would be hot Mike, hot Sam, all right, and now we've got snag, seam read dig, all right, hot swing, hot flare right now, quarterback is reading Mike, the Sam, those are the two guys that were unaccounted for. If either one of them blitz, now we have to be able to replace that, all right, with a throw somewhere because we can't block that, okay? If you were a shallow cross or a mesh team, all right, this is just the way we would do it in our teaching progression, all right? If we were, if we were a shallow cross team, I would swing the back to the side of the shallow cross. A lot of air raid West Coast teams don't do that, but we do it because of how we teach our quarterback. So now I would probably go with my shallow coming from the front side here, all right, and then I could either go levels or dig on top of that, okay, or I could do something different with the front side number two, but either way, if I had shallow coming here with hot swing going out, now the quarterback has Mike to Sam. And if one of them were to blitz, he can replace it either with the shallow working in or the hot swing working out. Okay, shallow working in or hot swing working out. I've got an inside breaking route with an outside breaking route, giving my quarterback a chance to replace blitzers and make hot throws. Hot means I cannot block that player coming. Okay, so you've got curl spot, you've got seam read, all right, on what we call, all right, seam read, dig, snag with the hot flare, all right, and then you've got shallow cross. If you go regular three-man scat, all right, or snag concepts, you could go two to the corner, one on the snag, free hot flare. Now your quarterback has an inside breaking route, an outside breaking route. If he gets a blitz that you deem to be hot, he can get rid of the football right now, okay? So again, these are ways that you can get three out to the front side, have your quarterback account for who the blitzers are in an odd front, in a stacked front, in a 4-3 or a 4-2 front, okay, really doesn't matter how you do it or how you want to do it, all right, as long as your quarterback understands how to get the football out of his hand and your linemen understand who we're accounting for and who we're not accounting for, okay. The next thing you're going to want to build in, all right, is you're going to want to build in a way that you can double read these protections. All right, to where if you were one back, all right, you want to build in a way where your back now, all right, runs some type of double read inside to outside, okay, and then after his double read, you incorporate some type of route where he goes. Now what we're going to do is we are going to check the blitz of the Mike or the Sam with the tailback. So now if one of them wants to blitz, we can account for it, with our tailback and now we've got it blocked up and the quarterback can finish his drop and look to throw the ball down the field because we've got that, that, that blitz blocked. So now when we go with this type of protection with the tailback double reading, okay, and again we put the tailback on a double read and we do it inside to outside. Now when we do that, okay, the quarterback has to understand that both these linebackers have to come to make it a hot throw. So now if one of them blitz, we can block one of them, but we can't block both of them, okay? But what has happened now is we've eliminated one of his hot throws, all right? We've eliminated one of his hot throws, so now if we're two by two and I can't get a third player out because I'm using a back in protection, all right, if I can't get a third player out, now what I've done is eliminated one of his hot throws, all right, so now he has to understand that he's really only got one place to go with the football if both linebackers were to come, okay, if both linebackers were to come. Now, for us, that's normally something we would do in three by one, all right, if I knew that the team, if, if I knew that it, if we were in three by one, okay, and I knew that to three by one, all right, that team was going to give us a six-man box, and they were going to give us an apex backer, all right, and they were going to give us maybe a backside player playing three vert, and I know that I can't get four weak, 
In other words, I know they can't bring a fourth guy weak because the fourth guy weak is either got to be the corner playing man or the safety playing three vert. So if they can't bring a fourth guy weak, and I don't have to worry about a fourth guy weak, now I can keep my tailback in to double read, and now what we would do, all right, is we would say, okay, the lineman, you have one, two, three, four, five. Quarterback, you have those two, all right? And now, however we wanted to progress to our route on the front side, okay, we could go snag, corner, bubble, right now, with a double read by the tailback, and now if both of these guys blitz, the quarterback has a snag or a bubble that he could throw to get the ball out of his hand to throw hot. If only one of them, okay, if only one of these guys blitzes, my tailback can block one of them. So now if one of them blitzes, and they, it, you know, depending on however they want to do it, one guy comes, the Mike or the Sam, now the tailback blocks it and my quarterback can sit with his feet firm and throw his full scat progression, snag corner flat, he can throw all of them now because he knows if, he, if he's got a double read tailback, all right, if I have six blockers, all right, they're going to have to send, all right, seven to make it hot. So two of those linebackers that we don't account for, both of them would have to come to make it hot because I've got six helmets. If one of them comes, okay, if one of them comes and we assume that we've already got the backside guy accounted for, that only makes six possible players that can rush. We can account for six if we leave the back in, okay? If we leave the back in and double read, we can account for six. It's if both of them come, seven we can't account for. So again, if I know I can't get four weak, I can put my tailback front side, and all you got to do is have different protection calls for your tailback. One tells him to go away, one tells him to go two, one tells him to free release. That's all you got to do is build in three or four protection calls for your back that you just tag at the end of the call, and he knows, hey, I'm going play side and I'm free release. I'm going play side and I'm double reading, all right, or I'm going place, or I'm going backside and accounting for four weak. So now here he could go, if you're running that concept, now he can go double read into a check down route. So he can double read and then go into a check down route. Okay? All right, so that's how you can account for within your protections and within your passing schemes, that's how you can account and how you teach your quarterback and how you teach your hot system. And for us, like I said, we build the hot throws into the route progression. All right, that's just something that we do. Another thing you're going to want to be able to do if you're facing heavy pressure teams is you're going to, be, you're going to want to be able to full slide and keep both backs in. Okay, so you're going to want to be able to have something in, whether it be play action or not, you're going to want to be able to go full slide, okay? All right, and where you feel like you can gap out versus heavy pressure and now get the ball working, okay, working down the field to where now you feel like you don't have to throw the ball. Because what's going to happen is guys are going to say, well, every time they blitz, we got to throw hot. Well, it's a chess match between you and the coordinator, when they blitz, how they blitz, and how many you release and how many you try to block. So if you know they're a heavy pressure team and you want to get the football down the field, okay, then one of the things you may want to do is you, want to may, you may want to go full slide, all right, with backs in. And now what you may want to do is fully slide these guys away with back in, play action back in, and now you've got seven in protection, gapping it out full slide, and now if you want, you got quarters beaters, you can go with, all right, the double post with dig on the back side, okay? You can go post over dig on the front side with shallow coming from the back side, okay? If you like your one-on-one -on -one matchup, you can go back here and you can go, all right, if you're getting a, a team that maybe is an eight-man box here with a corner that has to handle all of this, you can now go post corner, all right, you can go corner comeback, you can work all your one-on-one -on -one routes back to the X, but now you know that if you're going full slide with both backs in, you can gap it out and if pressure comes, you feel like you've got seven helmets to block seven defenders. Let's fully gap it out and let my quarterback stay on his feet and progress a throw down the field.
Okay, so again, that's just another thing in your, in, you know, another weapon in your offensive arsenal to say, hey, we've got five-man protection where we release everybody. We got six-man protection where we keep an extra back in, and then we've got seven-man protection where we full slide. We don't big on big, half slide. We full slide, gap out, and put two backs away from the side that we full slide, and now we feel like we can progress and throw the football down the field. All right. Again, it's all a matter of how you want to teach your quarterbacks, your receivers, your linemen. It's all a matter of what your theories are on offense. Okay. This is just the way. All right. Somebody asked a question about describing hot throws and, and how you build hot throws in. This is the way you can build hot throws into your protection using half slide, getting a back out with three receivers on the front side. You can do it out of any formation you want. You can do it out of two by two, three by one, two by one double tight. As long as you have three receivers on the front side and you can get a third guy out, it could be a tailback, it could be a fullback, it doesn't matter. As long as you get three out and then within your progression you build in hot throws with an in-breaking route and an out-breaking route so that if you're getting some type of zone pressure you can all right, have your quarterback replace those holes and those windows with inside and outside breaking routes. If you're getting man pressures all right, you, you may be better off blocking up man pressures and trying to go down the field because now if you get man, all right, and, and they blitz, you got a guy covering a hot throw and a guy covering a hot throw. So versus man stuff, you may want to block that all up and get some rub or some pick routes or some downfield routes where you're taking shots down the field. All right, again, that's how I would build hot throws. That's how I build them into my offense. That's how I teach our receivers and our linemen how to do it. That's how I teach our quarterback how to do it. If done effectively, if you throw the ball enough and your quarterback understands where to go with the football, you can defeat blitzes by just having a plan with the football, or you can at least discourage all right, blitzes by having a plan with the football and having them feel like, hey, every time we blitz, he gets it out of his hand. We can't really get there. We'd probably be better off just covering. Okay? Remember, there's no magic bullet. If the other team is better at what they do or out-executes you, you're going to, you know, it doesn't matter where your hot throws are. Defenses now are using blitzes, dropping guys into where they think the hot throws are coming. All right, so again, if it comes down to execution, blocking, tackling, throwing, catching, and you doing what you do better than they do what they do. All right, but in the end, always remember, all right, you want your kids playing fast, you're not going to play well until your kids play fast. See you next time.